Ready for my cherry cheese danish. What do you eat? Nice. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Already packed up, ready to go. First light at Rainier, is it National Park? Yeah, Mount Rainier National Park. First light at Mount Rainier National Park. 5.30, starting our journey from sunrise to Indian Bar. 20 kilometers to go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so Emily and I were just walking down this path and it was a nice warming temperature wise. And we turned this one corner and all of a sudden it like instant there's like a gust of wind and it instantly jumped up like at least five degrees maybe it became from a chilly morning to like a very warm morning to be honest it's a little weird and now it's back down yeah. that's so bizarre each of these little valleys and turns has its own like weather system at this point that might be in for a really nice sunrise here. Unfortunately, we are gonna be going downhill first, which will probably put us in tree line, so we won't see it, but hopefully at least before we start going down, there's a little bit of a lookout. That first light hitting Rainier. So quiet and peaceful, so nice. Okay. Here we go. Back on the Wonderland Trail. Let's get it. So something I've been waiting for is to see an early sunrise just hit the top of Rainier and here it is. Look at that pinky glow, that's so nice. Almost fully colored now. Down the trail we go. So we made it to White River, bit of a road walk now. And I think we're both equally happy we stayed at sunrise. Even though it wasn't a busier area, we had that mini town day. And then we also got to see a nice sunrise, hence the name. Um, that would have been an unreal spot, even just to drive in early in the morning. Like from the parking lot, you must have had an unreal view of the sun hitting Rainier and everything. So really cool spot. If you're looking for a sunrise, stay there instead of White River. White River is just down in the valley, so you don't see much. Now we're just gonna dump some garbage and then get back on trail. Next stop, Summerland. Probably the most hyped up camp spot. But what's this? Water fountain. Sorry, I cut too early. Not just a water fountain, a water refill station. Incredible. You have no idea how satisfying this is to see. Sun is shining on White River. Another water crossing.
it's like having a fanny pack. It's so efficient. Just have snacks ready to go. So 8.30 now, we've been hiking for about three hours. So we're gonna stop to take breakfast. We got our nice foam sofa that I made. And then I'm uh, gonna take about a half an hour to, probably not an hour, because we're still out of the sun, so we're still feeling good. And then we start the ascent after that. Morning. Morning, man. How's it going? Great. And so it cuts all the branches. <laughs> It's great. Okay. Nice thick okay. layer of screen and sweat. Yeah. Sun ain't touching me. That's why this hat's so discolored. Look at that. That mark right there isn't wet. It's just sun stained and bug spray and sunscreen and that's the color it's supposed to be. That's the color it is. Made it to the top. The start of Summerland. Look at that snow and rain here. Lookup point from Summerland Camp. Journey up to Summerland. Better, worse? Probably better than I thought. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. A lot of forest and covered parts. I feel like we did it pretty fast too. Yeah, we did pretty fast. And then the last bit was super pretty with flowers and views of the mountain. Yeah. And then heading up there next. How do you feel about that? I feel okay. We're making good time, and then we're gonna have lunch near the top. Got a structure here. for group campsites. So that's pretty sweet. Nice look out into the valley. Tons of little chipmunks. Wow. Onward and upwards. So just leaving Summerland now, out of all the campsites that were kind of hyped up and everything, that one was definitely the nicest. That would have been really cool to stay at. And it gives me high hopes for Indian Bar because that's also something that people say is pretty sought after. And that's the one site the ranger was very surprised was available when we got our permit. Uh, there's also supposed to be a really nice waterfall there. Although we've seen a lot, this is the first one that's actually marked on the map. So that should be pretty great. But uh, just walking through this area, you can really see how Summerland gets its name. In Summerland now, but you can see all the snow 
in the different layers on Rainier. Look at that. It's basically what we've been drinking for the past six days. thing in the park. Absolutely stunning mountain creek. Look at that. So pretty. Valley down there. Want a little bit more rocky terrain now. I ditched the poles because I want this ready in hand. Beautiful looking waterfall we're approaching. Super impressive waterfall. Love those log crossings so much. It gets you so close. And right next to the waterfall, got some snow. And then our ascent continues. There's the bigger glacier that the melt is coming from. It's incredible. And we can see people way up on that coal, which is, I'm not really sure if it's the first peak or the second peak. I have a feeling it's the first, but hopefully we can find some shade and take a break soon. Nice, super blue glacial lake. I think we're gonna try and find area to stop for a bit of a break here but not a ton of shade lunch break spot emily in the makeshift shade time for a dip and walking all the way around for a photo on that rock. Thanks, Emily. So after a glorious swim in the most refreshing water ever, I now understand the cold soaking thing. That was, that felt so good. Body temperature instantly plummeted, feeling super refreshed even though it's still super hot out. Uh, we got to get up that peak behind me now, right over that coal. And then there's a little bit of descent 
and then one other peak we have to go to before getting to camp. Um, but feeling a lot better now after that swim and some lunch. It's a little lake we went for a swim in. Almost there. So this is the top of the coal. I don't know how long it took to get up here, but kind of like skyscraper peak. It was uh, faster than expected. So now we head down to Indian Bar, but holy crap, jeez. This is by far the best view ever. on the other side of the coal. It's a closer approach on this valley. Stunning. It's kind of a shame that to me, this is honestly the best view of the whole time, just seeing all the layers and everything, but it just really doesn't show up on camera. It just seems like we're going up and down throughout this stunning valley now until we get to camp. So it's a good thing we left early. The sun is pretty harsh, but uh, Yeah, I can't get over that. So this looks like the remnants of an old alpine lake. This shows what happens once all that melts. Got a couple nice streams off in the distance there. Maybe that's the waterfall that people mentioned, or that's also on the map, but makes you wonder once that's all done, what's gonna happen to the overall landscape. Oh, I haven't even put my back fully down. Yeah. It's so cold. Yeah. Nice little rest spot. Snowman. Good idea. Okay, let's finish. Welcome to Indian Bar.
Yep. So we should be coming across it very soon now. We didn't have to cross the stream or the river just yet, but right when we do cross it, somewhere up there, that's where our camp will be. Not sure if it's where that hut is, that may be a shelter or like a group site or something like that we saw at Summerland, but no eyes yet on the campsite. So that's our view from where we came. I think that sunset area was way up there in that patch. And then we came that huge long track down. It's a cool little hut. along with the one that runs under the bridge are the ones that people were telling us about. There's no real way to see from the other side. You probably could go down even more, but it's a lot sketchier than it looks. Absolute godlike light hitting that. That's stunning. What an end to this day six at Indian Bar. Nice to close it off with just an unreal sunset. Not something I would have imagined or predicted. There's no oranges, pinks, or reds or anything, but that's that's so unique to see something like that. Then uh, I think the goal for day seven tomorrow is to wake up even earlier because we really want to catch a sunrise and it's about two kilometers to the next kind of peak. So I think we're going to be waking up pretty early and uh, trying to watch the sunrise, get some stuff of, uh, get some photos of that and just kind of enjoy it, have breakfast up there because we only have like 10 kilometers or something to do tomorrow. So it should be a lot easier of a day, but uh, we're going to start it off on a, hopefully, hopefully another magical note. It's not golden hour. It's dinner hour. Featuring Emily's nutritious burritos. <laughs> Good? The fajita stack is also slowly coming to a close. Started fajitas, I keep calling fajitas. The tortillas. I started the trail with 30. <laughs> so you can do the math, 30 tortillas, eight days. It's a lot. I also realized I didn't do too much showing of the campsites. Once we got here, we were just so tired. Just wanted to kind of get set up, get our feet in the water, get unpacked. The flies were really bad here as well during the day. They're starting to tame down now, but uh, that kind of distracted us a bit. But I'll show you our site. All the other sites were really far away from the bear hang as well as water. So we went to the one that's closest, but it's extremely slanted. So. I'll show you our little nook that we have here. So here we have our completely level tent. It's definitely gonna have to have our feet up. They have a nice little bench here. This other area, which we couldn't fit anything really. No real view, but you can see some mountains through the, through the brush, which is nice. But uh, yeah, that's home for the night.
Okay, Emily, we missed highs and lows from yesterday. So let's hear them. Hi was the area around Summerland camp, which we heard was going to be really nice. We didn't stay there, but just as we passed it, there was a really beautiful um, view of Rainier and a meadow with all these wildflowers and a creek, and, and it was really lovely. Um, and then the low was just, for me, just past that area was a really open, exposed rocky area. And I'm a baby with heat, and it was really hot, and uh, and it was an ascent. So I just found that the most challenging part of the day. The views were beautiful. It was just very hot. There is a heat warning in Rainier right now, though. So I think it was genuinely very hot. But yes, um, anyway, I found that hard. So that was my low. What were your highs and lows from yesterday, day six? Day six, uh, the highs were definitely... Uh, coming over that one coal after swimming in the lake, um, like up in the mountain and just coming and seeing that huge view with whatever mountain that was in the background. Um, and just off in the distance, it was just like a huge open valley. Like to me, that was probably my favorite view of the whole trip so far. Um, that and honestly, just kind of hanging out at Indian Bar, just like sitting by the river especially like where we ate dinner and just seeing like kind of the shadow creep across that valley and then like that sunset where it was just like a slice of light hitting that green patch of grass i thought that was like so cool to see i'm really glad i got to photograph that um so i'd say those are my highs and my low especially because i had really high expectations for camping at indian bar i think we learned a big lesson on this trip that just because it's a sought after camp site doesn't mean the site's themselves are nice the surrounding area could be good because i think indian bar the section or the site one that we were on was definitely the worst site that we were on the entire trail so that's definitely my uh my downside for that day day six and with the sun now dipping below the horizon i think this is a great spot to end day six on the Wonderland Trail. See you on the next one.